everyone. Thank you for the webinar today. Uh, we have some exciting news to share about brand new third party research from AV Test that places Cisco Umbrella first in security efficacy. So taking a look at our journey forward today, uh, we're going to start with an overview of major cyber threats that were seen in 2019. We'll introduce our DNS layer and secure web gateway offerings. We'll reveal the results from the AV test efficacy report, and then explain how Cisco Umbrella can help your organization. And this is an interactive session, so please feel free to post questions in the chat room. My name is Andrea Kaiser. I'm a se within security research at Cisco Umbrella. And I'm Johnny Noble, and I manage a team of technical marketing engineers also in Cisco Umbrella. So we're going to begin with a look at the major cyber threats of uh, 2019. Uh, this research that we're going to look at now is based on Umbrella's global network. Umbrella protects users from connecting to malicious sites on the Internet. It analyzes over 200 billion DNS requests daily. DNS requests is what gives our researchers a unique view of the Internet. So starting with uh, these uh, top four most um, pervasive threats that we see across enterprises, 46% of organizations have been impacted by phishing in their environment. This is where uh, you would receive an email or a web page designed to trick you into entering your user credentials for various accounts and brands. And this can lead to a further compromise of a network given the right credentials are stolen. 56% uh, of organizations have been impacted by crypto mining. So crypto mining in a business environment can steal processing power from essential systems. And malicious crypto mining is consistently ranked as one of the top threats across all Internet activity. We see that 59% of organizations have seen Trojans in their environment. Trojans can open a backdoor into infected systems, steal information, and even drop additional malicious payloads, uh, further complicating a system compromise. And then 88 organizations have seen general malware in their environment. And this can include anything from information stealers to browser hijackers to ransomware. And taking a look at the regions that are most impacted uh, by these uh, types of attacks, we see uh, North America sees the most threat traffic, uh, followed by Europe. And if we take a look at the traffic distribution by industry, uh, we can look into these industry verticals. The top industry impacted by threats uh, does tend to fluctuate every two to three months, but we consistently see that higher education is in the top two, and that the education space sees the highest level of crypto mining traffic compared to any other vertical. Andrea, this is quite interesting. Um, I also see manufacturing there in, in the top three. Do, do we have any idea why? I mean, financial services, it's pretty obvious why that would be a target for for malicious uh, actors. But higher education and manufacturing, do we, do we know more about that? Yeah, with higher education, um, they're a large ta target for phishing attack campaigns. So if a threat actor can get access to systems of um, say of a university, for instance, if they get access uh, through credential theft, uh, they're guaranteed access to personal data from all of the students, uh, access to confidential research, and then the universities will theoretically have money available to pay large ransoms for ransomware attacks as well. Um, also, many of the users are students, and they have a very active uh, presence on social media, typically. And this can be an initial access point to host uh, malicious attacks. Um, as far as uh, manufacturing, uh, these systems are usually uh, pretty antiquated and not updated frequently. And so they're vulnerable to uh, security attacks. OK, so now let's take a look um, at the threats based on the size of the organization. So threats target everyone, but we see that our large enterprise businesses with 10,000 plus employees um, in 2019 saw 54% of that threat traffic. 
This is also interesting. Um, do we have any ideas why medium-sized businesses are, are less prone to these these attacks compared to small and, and enterprise size? Yeah, it's a good question. So small businesses are um, usually attractive targets uh, since they may not have dedicated security employees to protect their systems. Um, and then large businesses are targeted because they have more resources to exploit. And then an attacker can hopefully gain access to financial accounts with access to larger sums of money with these businesses, and then even hope to stay under the radar with all of the traffic that these large businesses see and monitor on a daily basis. Um, and then when you look at medium-sized businesses, they're just least the least attractive because while they are also usually expected to have security professionals employed just like large businesses, um, they don't necessarily have enough resources to make it worth it for the attacker's effort to exploit them. Got it. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. So now, Johnny, I'll go ahead and I'll hand it over to you. And you can tell us about the results of Cisco Umbrella's DNS layer protection and SWG offerings that were tested within the security advocacy report. So now we're going to take a look at the actual uh, test that was performed by AV Test and have a quick look at some of the parameters, the testing method methodology, and, and the results as well, and then our conclusions. So the message here is that the, um, a test was performed by AV Test, which is a third-party tester that, that deals in security testing. And we're very proud that Cisco Umbrella was um, in first place in threat detection or threat efficacy in the various tests that were performed. So um, one, of our, one of the things that we're very proud of is, is you know, we put uh, our emphasis on security efficacy. It's one of the most important things in our, in our product. Um, and this, this is important to us because it shows validation from an independent third party that Umbrella was uh, placed in first, it was put in first place in the findings. Um, we're going to talk about um, the, the samples that were used. The testing was was done throughout November and December in 2019. And we also see how the test, um, there were two types of tests for DNS layer and SWG, Secure Web Gateway. In both of the tests, Umbrella was, was in the first place. Let's first uh, have a quick look and understand what these two different technologies are. So DNS layer is, is useful for, it's a good layer of protection. It's the first line of defense because it's the first connection, it's the first step in any connection to the internet. So before any files are transferred, before any device or, or program or user or anything connects to uh, any kind of web server or anywhere else on the internet, the first thing that happens is a DNS query. And this is where we are um, adding the security at that layer. So that's, that's the first type of test that was done. And in that test, uh, Umbrella was compared against other vendors that have a, a comparable or, or similar solution. And then the second type of testing that was done was uh, SWG, Secure Web Gateway, also known as a full web proxy. And this is where all traffic gets inspected, so every every request goes through the proxy. Um, the 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 files uh, are actually seen and inspected in the proxy um, by different types of engines, and um, you'll get full logging of, of full URLs in in every um, transaction as well. And the full web proxy also allows other kinds of controls, such as uh, app control and content control. But for the, the purpose of, of this testing, actually not only in SWG, but also in, at the DNS uh, layer, it was only the, the actual security engines of all solutions that were, were, were used. So there was no, um, there was no content control or, or you know, blocking of, of um, specific categories. The other thing worth mentioning in, in the SWG is that um, the SSL decryption um, option was turned on for all, all products as well. So let's uh, take a, a closer look and understand here uh, what we did test and what we didn't test. So as I said, we had separate testing for the DNS layer um, and for the, the SWG. In each of the, the tests, um, 
the, the samples that were tested were split, split into three different threat types. We'll talk a bit more about those as we go on. And in each of the tests, Umbrella was compared with three other different vendors. Now, this is important. We had no knowledge of the samples. The, the testing and the methodology was done by AV test. We did not know what they were going to test, um, and the same for the other vendors, of course, as well. Uh, but this is this is why this was a you know a good um, third-party um, evaluation. There were a total of 3,668 samples that were tested. The both the same set was used for uh, both the DNS and the full proxy uh, testing, and all tests ran at the same time. So this is important as well because you know in different points of time, um, some some threats that maybe were unknown later might have become known, and, and um, signatures might have been issued. So all, all the products had to have the same chance, and that's why the tests were all run at the same time. Um, and, and another thing worth mentioning is that all the products were configured to give the highest layer of protection. We're talking about security protection here. So what did we not do? Uh, first of all, we did not test uh, DNS and SWG in one test together. They, as I said, they were, these were separate tests. Um, Umbrella's cloud-delivered firewall was not tested. Again, we're talking about the DNS layer and the SWG layer as well. Um, I mentioned this, but it's, it's important as well. We only had the security settings in, in, in um, configured. We didn't um, add any other kind of content controls. And also, this is a, 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 a these were tests for security efficacy. So we didn't do any other kind of performance testing, like speed of, of a, a cloud uh, product or any kind of latency, reliability, or anything like that. We're talking here purely about security. Okay, let's start by having a, a look at the DNS layer protection. Um, as I said, the testing was done throughout de November and December in 2019. AV test used their samples, not ours. We had no knowledge of what they were testing beforehand. And all products were configured to provide the highest layer of protection. Um, so talking about some of the, the, the products, um, so we, we tested only DNS layer protection. Uh, no SWG policies. Now, Umbrella and Akamai do have uh, selective proxies. In fact, let's let's take a look at the results and the vendors that that uh, were tested. So, before I dig into the results themselves, we can see the the vendors here. So, as I mentioned, Umbrella has a selective proxy, and so does Akamai, and they were both configured. But we also did a test for Umbrella without the the selective proxy as well, just so we can see the difference between having it enabled or not. And I'll talk about that. Okay, so for the, the Palo Alto uh, testing, it's interesting here because what uh, AV test did was they used a Palo Alto Nexium firewall that has the um, DNS security service enabled. And what they did was they checked if DNS queries that were going through the Nexium firewall were blocked by that, that DNS security service. So although it's not a, it's not the same as Umbrella, Infoblox, and Akamai that is um, giving a, a recursive DNS service, uh, what's happening is that Palo Alto is um, checking DNS queries that are going through the, the next-gen firewall and using um, a database, and, and it could be on the device or in the cloud or both, um, to see if the reputation of that DNS, uh, the domain that's getting requested, is, is good or not. So that, that's the way that, that was done. Okay, if we look at the... Um, the results here, um, first of all, we can see that Umbrella, both with and without the, the selective proxy configured, um, outperformed all the other vendors if we look at the total amount of um, uh, the, the, the total detection rate. Also, um, we've got here the, different, the three different types of uh, tests that were um, done. Um, by AV tests, so malicious um, PE files. These are these are portable executables, malicious destinations, and phishing links. And and Andrea, I think you're going to talk more about these um, as we go on a bit as well. So um, the other thing that's 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 useful to to know here is that even though Umbrella, even without the the, the selective proxy, still outperformed the other vendors quite quite significantly as well. Um, but it's it's very good to see that the selective proxy that Umbrella offers 
still adds a, a, adds a lot of value here. So you know the, the sort of risky domains that uh, just by by uh, at the time of query, if if Umbrella doesn't know if they're safe or, or malicious, um, and it's a small proportion, it's a very small proportion, but these domains will still get forwarded trans transparently to the selective proxy for a closer inspection. Okay, let's move over now to the uh, other test. And this was the SWG testing. So once again, as I said uh, um, previously, all tests were done at the same time. So this was also in November, December. Um, and once again, all the products were configured to provide the highest level of protection. Now, uh, let's have a quick look at the vendors here that we're talking about. So uh, we've got, as well as Umbrella's uh, full web proxy, and we also had the, the Symantec Web Security Service, so that's the cloud-delivered service. Um, and then on top of that, Zscaler's um, Zscaler Internet Access. And then Palo Alto, we, even though this is not an SWG, it's not a proxy, this is a cloud, um, cloud-based um, next-gen firewall um, called Prisma Access. Um, but what's interesting is even though this is not an SWG, the type of protection that's offered is, is very comparable to, to what is delivered in, in an SWG. So uh, these are the, the four products that were tested. Once again, we can see here now, it's, it's, first of all, the first thing we see is that the numbers are generally higher than um, the, the DNS layer. So, you know, it's, um, um, it's, it's a full proxy and everything does get inspected. Um, but once again, Umbrella did perform better than the other three vendors. Um, we can see that Symantec and Zscaler, their, le their level of protection is, is quite close to one another, but still uh, a bit lower than, than Umbrella. Um, and Palo Alto is, is, is a bit lower than that as well. So Johnny, just looking there at the numbers that uh, Palo Alto got the 72.38%, you could go back one slide actually and uh, look at the numbers for um, umbrella at the DNS layer? That's a good point that you bring up because even even though the layer of protection in general we can see that, that the DNS layer is lower than SWG, it's interesting, and that, that's a good point you, you, you saw there, that the total detection rate of umbrella with the DNS and selective proxy is still higher at 72.63, it's still higher than uh, Palo Alto at 72.38 for their full cloud um, product. So yeah, that's a good point. Thank you for, for noticing that. Okay, uh, let's move on. Um, so looking at the, the numbers and thinking about what we saw, what are the key takeaways that we can see from this report? So first of all, um, DNS is still very effective. It's, it, you know, it's, it gives, gives a good layer of protection. Um, even without the selective proxy, we, saw, we, we still saw that Umbrella performed better than the other vendors if we look at the, um, the total detection rate. However, we did see that uh, adding a selective proxy makes a big difference um, and brought those, those numbers up a lot higher. So, you know, if you can and when you can, we always recommend um, configuring and including the, the selective proxy in, in uh, policies. Not always will this be possible, maybe on a guest network if you can't um, if you if those are not you know controlled or owned devices by by the enterprise, um, if you can't put a, a trusted root certificate on them, for example, um, but even without the selective proxy, um, DNS layer on its own was was still very effective. Um, one thing that you might have noticed, some of you, is that if we look at the individual tests themselves, when we look at the SWG. Uh, testing results. The, even though Umbrella's total detection was the highest out of out of all of those vendors, uh, if we look at the individual type of tests, we saw we can see that uh, in phishing, Zscaler did have a higher uh, detection rate than Umbrella. However, the thing that we should also remember here is, first of all, yes, Umbrella's total detection is higher, and secondly, um, Umbrella also offers you know not even though we ran these tests separately for DNS and, and web. Umbrella does offer both the DNS layer and the, the SWG in a single offering, so you can have both policies running together. Now, Zscaler cannot do that. Um, they do not offer DNS protection together with the uh, Zscaler Internet Access product. 
And so the key takeaway is here that uh, you know, the, the last key takeaway here is just the same comment that Andrea mentioned before. Umbrella's DNS layer outperformed uh, Palo Alto's full Prisma access offering. So the conclusions here, the bottom line is that yes, DNS layer is still really good. It's simple to, to, to deploy, quick to deploy, easy to manage, and will always offer a good layer of protection. If you can include the selective proxy on that, then that's even better. And then on top of that, you know, the best layer of protection will always be the SWG. But our recommendation and our, you know, our key takeaway here is probably that organizations should adopt a layered approach to security, meaning that because we offer both SWG and DNS layers, you can, you can deploy both of those, you can protect your networks with both of those together. So I think in the chat here we're going to share this link, but this is where you can access the report and read it for yourself, the full AV test report. And there's more information there than we covered in, in the session here today. Okay, so let's now take a look and see how Umbrella can help and what layers of protection we, we offer in more details and, and more about our protection. So first of all, Umbrella is a cloud-based solution that protects all users wherever they are, whether they are connecting through some kind of main office, headquarters, data center, or branches, or you know, roaming users as well. So we will boost the existing security. You can, Umbrella can be uh, added on top of another existing solution. Um, it can be installed on different device types, roaming devices, and um, also branches as well. So, you know, we're seeing sort of a, a move away from the, the traditional model of only um, sort of one, one location, like a main data center or headquarters uh, being protected through some kind of a security stack. And we're seeing, you know, not just that now, we're seeing these, these other models as well of roaming and mobile users and, and branches as well. So, Johnny, do you have any thoughts about why we're seeing that type of shift and move here? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, first of all, branches. Um, branches, we're seeing right now that direct internet access, and you can see that here on, on, on the bottom, direct internet access is, is relatively cheap today. Um, and that goes nicely together with the fact that a lot of organizations are using um, applications that are you know, cloud-based SaaS applications or even building their own applications in the cloud as well. And this means that you don't need to be on the corporate network or you know on the internal network to to connect to these applications so it doesn't make sense anymore to backhaul all of all of your traffic to your your main data center to break out securely it's expensive to do this to use mpls and other expensive circuits so anything that can access the internet directly is now getting allowed to um, to access the internet directly and only the internal traffic needs to be backhauled now in a similar way the roaming users um, a lot of people you know work um, remotely from home um, you know we, we've seen recently with the with the coronavirus as well that a lot of, of workers are, are working remotely and again it's the same sort of thing if, if you don't need to connect to your corporate uh, VPN or your internal network to access these um, cloud base applications um, then then you wouldn't you can access them directly so in order to do this what we're seeing is that because all of the the, the work we're doing is cloud or a lot of the work we're doing is cloud-based the security needs to move to the cloud as well and that's that's sort of the bottom line here so you know umbrella is the first line of defense and it's it's going to, going to protect against threats on the internet wherever wherever users go wherever they're based and because it's all delivered from the cloud this is also the easiest way to to protect all of your users in in minutes um, and the intelligence we use you know we've, I think you're going to talk a little bit about that uh, Andrea in a few in a few minutes um, but you know the, Thanks to our intelligence and, and visibility, we can provide a very, very nice layer of protection. And 
Um, if we look at the sort of different components of Umbrella, we've spoken up to now about the DNS layer and the Secure Web Gateway that were included in the um, in the AV test uh, testing. Umbrella also provides a cloud-delivered firewall. Um, and also has protection against usage of cloud-based applications through through CASB. So those are the sort of main components of, of Umbrella, and everything is tied together through our threat intelligence. And I think, Andrea, this is where I'm going to hand back to you to talk more about that itself, the interactive threat intelligence. So over to you. So let's talk a little bit about our view of the Internet. It's massive. We have over 18,000 business customers worldwide, and they, we process over 200 billion Internet requests daily. And our customer base is global. It represents over 190 countries. So not only do we have a massive amount of data for our research, it's diverse globally, and it's not just from one type of network protocol. So, some more about our threat intelligence. Our DNS data serves as the foundation for our threat intelligence. We use it to learn where the threats are coming from, who's launching them, where they're going to, and how wide an attacker is reaching, and many more. Uh, this data allows Umbrella security researchers to be able to create statistical models so that we can use advanced techniques and deep learning and behavioral analytics, and we can programmatically identify malicious requests and infrastructures. So these models, they continuously run against our data, and we can cover potentially malicious domains, IPs, and URLs, and uncover these uh, before they're even used in attacks. We also use data from uh, Cisco Talos's large pool of researchers to enrich this intelligence. A little bit more on our specific uh, statistical models. Our models analyze both historical and live data. And we uh, scored uh, these models uh, with three different approaches. Um, we score guilt of domains and IPs to determine if they're part of an attacker's infrastructure. And then uh, these three main approaches that we use are guilt by inference, guilt by association, and patterns of guilt. So under our guilt by inference approach, uh, we have uh, one really interesting here called the co-occurrence model. This model looks at known bad internet requests and then analyzes requests that currently co-occur or happen at the same time, so within just a few seconds of these bad internet requests. And we do this to be able to make a determination and a conviction on whether these requests can also be considered malicious. So, and Andrea, is this sort of similar to like if if we know some guy is a bad guy, and we've some we, we've seen someone else hanging out with them, we can say we don't know who you are, but you know we've seen you hanging out with this this bad guy, so you're a person of interest to us as well. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Um, it's just it's a good way to be able to infer the maliciousness based on the relationship from. Uh, an already known malicious request to something that we might not know about yet. So one, um, moving on to, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, guilt by association approach. Uh, we have models here that uh, make use of our historical passive DNS data and also our who is information. And we have a predictive model that we um, use to make convictions against uh, IP space and be able to identify malicious infrastructure before it's used in any type of attack. And with our patterns of guilt approach, uh, we have a model here called the spike rank model. Uh, this takes into account uh, query traffic that we see to uh, domains. And if we notice that a domain um, suddenly has a, a spike in this query volume that's uncharacteristic, uh, this may be suspicious and we can uh, flag those domains to be able to make a conviction on them as well. So when we can share uh, one of the big benefits uh, that we hear from Umbrella customers uh, is that they experience uh, significant reductions in malware and alerts. And of course, this improves their operational efficiency. So more than half of our customers um, report 75% or higher reduction in malware. And then 7 out of 10 customers uh, reported seeing a 50% reduction and alerts from other security systems. 
So since Umbrella is stopping these threats earlier, the security teams don't need to waste uh, any time looking into any other alerts. And then the value that we can provide to our customers when they use Umbrella, we recently uh, did a survey that we uh, had run by Tech Validate. We found out that um, over 85% report a time to value for them in under a week, and over 50% report a time to value in under a day. Um, uh, just to summarize here before we, um, we finish and move on to, to a few questions, um, umbrella, umbrella, no, no. no. Just to summarize here before we move on to, to QA and then finish for today, um, Umbrella is probably the easiest security product you will ever deploy. Um, not only will it be quick and easy to, to deploy, but uh, in many cases it can also improve the end user's experience as well. It's very quick and easy to, to sign up and, and run a free trial. Uh, all you need to do is go to signup.umbrella.com point your DNS to our, our resolvers, um, you can see the IP address there, and that's it, you're done. And within minutes, Umbrella will, will show you, um, you know, quick time to value, just like um, in, in the examples that, that we just saw, and you'll, you'll be blocking malicious activity within minutes. So with that, we're going to uh, move to um, Q&A. And I think as we've gone along, there have been a, a couple of questions um, in the chat, so let's just find two or three of, of those and, and answer those. Uh, first of all, this isn't a question, but somebody actually pointed out that uh, they're using Umbrella at home for their DNS. So yeah, uh, that's, thank you for pointing that out. Actually, if we just look at the, the previous slide, just to show you the IP address one more time, um, anybody can, even if you're not a customer, you can just use Umbrella for free at home to um, give you uh, fast and reliable um, DNS and you know the bottom line is it will just add to our visibility and, and help um, uh, help our, our great um, uh, threat intel as well. All right, should we see, do you see any good questions there in, in the chat, Andrea? Yeah, there's one here, Johnny. Uh, someone is asking that since Cisco commissioned this test from AV test, um, how could the results uh, be kept to be fair? Yeah, that's a very good question, and I think it's important to, to stress here that even though Cisco did commission the test, uh, first of all, um, AV test is, is well known and, and, and well respected in, in the security industry, so, you know, they have to remain unbiased, they have to remain objective, um, and also, as I, as I also, as I said previously, Cisco and no other vendor had any previous knowledge of any of the samples that were being used, any of those malicious uh, um, destinations and URLs and, and, and files, um, and this actually is one of the, the biggest expertise of AV test. They, you know, they take pride in, in the fact that they are able to, to sample uh, thousands and thousands of malicious um, domains and samples um, and, and use those in, in their testing. Okay, so hopefully that does answer the question. And I, I can see one other question that's also tied to this. Um, so someone's asking, and Andre, maybe, maybe I think you'll be able to answer this probably in a better way than me. Um, someone was asking why the three specific malware categories were chosen. Yeah, sure. So we chose these types because they encompass the three major infection vectors that we see from attacker campaigns. So delivering a malicious executable onto a system, uh, visiting a web page where malicious code can run directly in the visitor's browser, and then phishing. So phishing for user, a user for credentials to be able to compromise the system or accounts. And we chose these based on our research and also based on AVS expertise in the type of malware cases that they are. Okay, great. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I think here we're going to um, close then for today. So uh, thank you everybody for, for your time. Um, I hope you, hope, hopefully you found this uh, session interesting and, and informative, and we look forward to um, seeing you on one of our future webinars as well. So um, thanks, uh, Andrea, as well, and bye, everybody. Thank you.